Hey everyone, welcome back to another Python programming tutorial and video. In the in the series that we're in currently, we've been checking out this module PXSSH, and that allowed us to uh, kind of manipulate SSH or the secure shell within Python to connect the servers and to run commands and that sort of really cool stuff. So in the last video, just to get things started, we created this new object that kind of acted as our SSH manager or controller. And uh, to review, we use that to go ahead and log in to a server, right? We were using uh, Over the Wire's uh, Bandit's uh, War Games account, and uh, that's what really what we were using as our example for an SSH thing to log into. So their user was Bandit0, and the password was also Bandit0. So once we were able to log in, it returned true for us, which means that we got in successfully. When we tried to log out, we were able to log out, of course, but when we tried to log back in, it gives us this error. And we were like, what? What's going on? Now, I wanted to use this as a segue and a transition to talk about the options and uh, variables and other attributes and properties that come with this S object, or our uh, SSH kind of controller and object manager. So it's telling us here that the self.pid, or self being, of course, S, the object that we just created, it's a variable PID. It's got to be set to none for us to be able to log in. So here's an interesting thing. Once we create this object, obviously that creates the s.pid variable and property. Once we log in, that's going to be set to something other than none. When we log in, it has to equal none because, I mean, it was just created, right? But once we log into the server, we've got a process ID for our SSH program, and now it's no longer none. Once we log out, for some reason, whatever reason, probably because we can only have one session, one secure shell session with our object at a time, but whatever the case may be, it's not reset to none. We could try and reset it to none. That might work for us, and then we could log in again. I've had some trouble with that, so I'm not going to take that route. But of course, another object, another uh, option is to just reinitialize the object. Right? So now when I check out self.pid, I'm not going to be returned anything because it's equal to none. So I can go ahead and log in, right? Without a problem. Sweet. Okay. So that was one of the uh, simple uh, options that I wanted to show you with our S object and our SSH kind of controller. You'll notice if you just type in your dot selector and then check out, uh, you know, control space to kind of autocomplete, you can see this big long list of all the kind of cool stuff that this module and uh, object can offer you. So. I want to go through some of those. Now, before I get into a little bit more, though, I do want to show off how the login function works in PXSSH. So, <laughs> I guess I'm going to put my money where the mouth is and log out and log in again after I reinitialize the object. So, I want to show you how this login function has more uh, options and arguments to it. So, I'll bring this down here. And you'll notice, of course, the server and username are mandatory arguments. The password is optional, because you could very well have a, a user that does not have a password. Uh, the terminal type, there's an original prompt, and that's kind of interesting. I want to know what that original prompt is all about. Um, login timeouts, ports, uh, none by default is probably going to reset you to uh, 22, but of course you can supply what port you want to go to. Um, SSH key, whether or not it's quiet, and all this stuff. So the description here it gives is of course, this logs the user into the given server, and it uses the original prompt variable and the argument to try and find the prompt right after login. When it finds the prompt, it immediately re tries to uh, reset the prompt to something more easily matched. <laughs> what does that mean, right? So the default original prompt is very optimistic, <laughs> and it's easily fooled. It's more reliable to try and match the original, and uh, I guess it's cut off there. So. It's interesting, those, those uh, backslash, uh, control backslash that I do inside the function, so you actually get a little bit more of the description and the, the tooltip, that comes from the help and the documentation of the module. You're not going to be able to find a whole lot of documentation for PXSSH online, but we can, of course, find it in the module itself. So if I pass in s.login, the function, into this help function, we'll be able to see everything that it gives us. And uh, let's go through and read a little bit more of that description here. It says, 
it's more liable to try and match the original prompt as exactly as possible to prevent false matches by server strings such as the message of the day. On many systems, you can disable the message of the day on the remote server by creating a zero-length file called hush login. If a prompt cannot be found, then it does not necessarily mean the login failed. In case of this, a timeout, is when using it for a prompt, we assume that the original prompt was so weird we were not able to match it. So we use a few tricks to guess where we've reached the prompt, and then we just hope for the best and blindly try and reset the prompt to something more unique. If that fails, then login will raise an exception and give us the error. Okay, so that's that's kind of weird, right? <laughs> there's a there's a lot of stuff going on there. But notice that the original prompt, it's it's regular expressions. This uh, hashtag or this pound symbol and this dollar sign typically represent the root user when you log into a Unix system or a regular user when you log into a Unix system. Uh, pound being root and the dollar sign being any, any user. This, these braces represent regular expressions, anything in this set. So what it does, like it says, is it tries to match this. And then, of course, it'll reset it to something a little bit more easily matched. But like it says, this is very optimistic. It may not be the prompt on your server or the thing that you're trying to connect to. So it says it's more liable to try and match the original prompt as exactly as possible. Now, if you're trying to log into a server you've never been on before, obviously this is going to be hard to do. But keep in mind this is all about p-expect. <laughs> Python expecting how the program is going to work. You as the programmer kind of already have a foresight as to how this gonna, it's, it's going to work for you. Like, I've of course already logged into uh, bandit0 at bandit.labs.overthewire.org before. So I know... Oh, SSH. My bad. I already know what, it's, what the prompt's going to be and how it's going to interact and, and work with me. So, But that's what it's saying. You're going to have to expect it, just like the p-expect module works. Here's an interesting thing. What if we try and change... Here, I'll log out, or I'll reset the object and then try and log back in. If we try and change the original prompt to equal a new set, something like uh, a, a period here, if I try and log in, ho, oh, it kind of throws up. It doesn't exactly know what to do. Now, you'll notice there is no period in the prompt that we would have seen. And that's kind of what's giving us this, this vomit here, why it's not working. And of course, it is looking through it with regular expressions. Okay, so that's something else that I wanted to show you. That original prompt is helpful. It can, also, it can be a blessing, but it can also be a, a curse. So here's something else that I wanted to show you. Uh, I'll reset the object and then try and log in uh, with something incorrect. Like, let's say I had the wrong password. So, I mean, it'll try and log in, and uh, you'll notice that a GUI pops up. This graphic user interface. Oh, I, I can't actually show you this. Why can't I show you that? Okay. <laughs> I wish you would have been able to see that uh, OpenSSH, uh, its dialog box had popped up asking for what the password could be. But it tells us this password is refused. So that's going to have that functionality when that works out. And uh, now I also want to show you another is alive property. S dot, does this exist yet? Let's I'll just reinitialize the object, log in with the correct password this time. Actually, before I do that, I'll show you is alive now. If I run it, is alive is false because we haven't connected to anything. You'll notice that uh, this description, here, I'll bring it back up for you. It tells us this test if the child process is running or not, and it's non-blocking. So you'll pretty immediately be able to tell you whether or not you're alive or you're connected or not. If I go ahead and log in, if it lets me log in, <laughs> log in with the correct password, we get true, hopefully. Okay, cool. So now we can log in and test if we're alive, and we are alive. I log out ask if we're alive, and we're not. So that's how that works. Pretty simple stuff, right? Okay. Those are, for now, all the options that I wanted to show you. Of course, if you're interested, you can uh, browse through this uh, long, long list of options that you could have with the S object and the PXSSH uh, module. So definitely give it a browse, definitely look through it, 
And of course, I would recommend looking through the entire help function on the object itself. There you can actually see the documentation of every function and what it does. So, rather than me kind of helping guide you through them. Because I'm sure I've, I've missed more than a few. So, we're still obviously at the basics. We still haven't actually sent any commands or done anything with SSH. So, I hope you guys are bearing with me and trying to get all this bull crap, the early stuff you need to learn first before we get into actually sending commands. So, thanks very much, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope you're learning a little bit more about the PX SSH module. If you are, maybe you like the video, maybe leave me a comment, give me some constructive criticism, and if you're feeling generous, I don't know, subscribe. You know I'd love that. Thanks, guys. I'll see you soon.